So the LG V10 has been out for about six months now and it just got the update to Android 6.0 Marshmallow. So I figured this was a really great time to revisit this phone and give you my comments and my overall thoughts. Now, this phone came out late 2015, so it's against some heavy hitters right now. You know, the Galaxy S7, LG's own G5, the HTC 10, and I really think it can keep up. There are one or two downfalls though that I'll mention. So the the best thing about this phone now is that it has Android 6.0 Marshmallow, which six months ago, even four months ago, I couldn't say that. So that's the great thing now. Six months later, it's got the latest version of Android. It's actually 6.0, so it's technically not the latest latest, but whatever. And after I upgraded to Android 6.0 Marshmallow, I noticed a few amazing things that happened. For one, the fingerprint scanner is now super fast. Like it's around, I would compare it to Nexus 6P territory. Like you still have to tap the button, but once the screen is on, you just tap it and it's unlocked pretty much instantly. It's pretty quick. The thing about the Nexus 6P though is that you can tap the fingerprint um, scanner and it automatically turns the phone on. With this phone, you still have to press the button. So you can't just tap it, you have to press the button, hold down, but it's still super fast. Anyway, I'm kind of rambling about that. That's a really good upgrade though. Um, and then also, we all know the second screen is a big part of the LG V10, and it has a second screen that's on when it's, the phone's off all the time. And just swiping through the top seems very responsive. Like it seems like an actual screen now, if that makes any sense. Before, I would almost compare it to like, it almost seemed like an e-ink screen, if you kind of know the, the screens that are with the Nook series. Like it was black and white, but when you swiped it, it didn't seem very responsive. Like it felt like a low quality screen. Now it just feels like a black and white normal normal screen. It's really responsive. It's great. Of course, you can you know toggle the flashlight on and off like this. Now you can turn your Wi-Fi on and off. You can even tap and print, bring up the camera, which is pretty cool. And another great thing, which is a given, the LG V10 came with 64 gigabytes of memory standard. So five months later, six months later, I still have a lot left. Like I've used 24 gigabytes, I think. So I still have a lot left. When phones give you 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes, that's good, but you'll eventually need more. 64 gigabytes is like a very healthy amount to where you know the operating system can have some room and then you have plenty of room for activities, you know, 4K recording, games, apps, everything like that. Not to mention, you can put a memory card in there as well, but I actually haven't found the need to. Okay, and now the negatives. First negative thing would be, ow, something is poking me. If I have a bee in my shirt. So the first negative thing is actually the removable back. So the removable back, when you take it off, at the very bottom, the rubber is like starting to peel off. And it's just kind of like coming off in the corners. It's probably where I take the back off all the time and that's where it's wearing. But I actually see where in the top corner as well. Actually all four corners <laughs> are starting to wear off. So basically over time the rubber is just gonna peel right off and you're just gonna have a normal plastic back which will basically hinder the experience with grip. Because right now you, know, you can grip it, it feels really good. But I guess a positive side you know, you just remove the plastic cover. So buy a new one, your phone's brand new. Speaking of removable, another downside to the LG V10, and even six months later, even after the Android 6.0 update, which is supposed to give better battery life, the battery life on this thing just is not what I would expect. If I'm using this phone, just kind of like normal to moderate use, I'll have to plug this thing in by like two, three o'clock. I mean, it's not a big deal most of the time because I'm either driving so I can plug it in in my car, I'm either at work so I can plug it in at work, or I'm just at home and I can plug it in. The fast charging juices it up pretty quickly, but it's still kind of unexcusable when phones like the Galaxy S7 can last all day and then some. It's just kind of expected these days to have an all day battery life. And even if you forget to plug it in at night, still have it into the morning so you can rely on its alarm feature if you use that. Um, but once again, another positive note, the battery is removable, so you can carry a spare battery with you if you kind of anticipate being out all day. 
you know, you can give them all, get them charged up, put one in your wallet, and you're good to go. So that's where we're at there. The LG V10 is still a really great device. If you want a lot of my general uh, thoughts and opinions, check out my four month review because that has a lot more general things. This video is more so just intended for, you know, what I think from the four month to the six month period where the biggest thing is the 6.0 update, which I mentioned brought along really good fingerprint scanner ability. We're just gonna say that's a term. And then also the um, second screen works a lot better now too. So overall, it was a really good update. So now the awkward question, is this device worth it in 2016 when we have the Galaxy S7, we have the LG G5, we have the HTC 10, we have the iPhone SE, is that even a contender? Mm. And we have the, the iPhone 6S Plus, and then even the new iPhone 7 coming out. So where does this thing stand in line? I think this phone is a great contender to all the other flagships coming out this year. The screen is a lot bigger than the current ones right now, so if you don't like the screen size of the S7 or HTC's offerings or LG's G5, go with this phone. You know, it's a bigger screen. Um, you know, there's also the option of the Nexus 6P if you want a bigger screen as well. Now, would I consider this to be, you know, a daily driver for me? Sure. Um, the battery life, though, just isn't what I would expect it to be. So if I'm going to go, you know, out of town and I want to rely on something that's going to last me all day and then some into the morning, into maybe the next late morning afternoon, I'm going to go with the Galaxy S7. If I want, you know, a bigger screen, uh a good solid camera, uh, maybe just a media consumption device, I'll go with this. And that's all And that's all I really have to say about that. The LG V10 sure holds its own in 2016, even though it didn't come out this year. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What phone do you have? Is the LG V10 you have on your radar? Are you kind of weighing the pros and cons of the V10 versus the new flagships? You know, why are you considering the LG V10? I wanna hear everyone's opinions. It's still a great phone, and I actually can't wait until LG's next V10. Is it gonna be called the V11? I don't know. Something about j this premium but rugged feel is really nice. LG, if you're watching this, you can make the exact same phone like this, but make it waterproof, <laughs> and I'll buy it. That's all I gotta say about that. And I will see you guys later. Bye. Yes, that was my shoe.